On Tech News Today, President Obama is in Silicon Valley and asking for cooperation. So why are Google and Yahoo snubbing the president? Plus, Pinterest is getting a buy button, the U.S. is getting an online Xiaomi store, and kids are getting a new virtual reality toy. It's all coming up next on Tech News Today. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Friday, February 13th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by LegalZoom. Get your life organized and protect your family with a will or living trust, plus incorporate your business or form an LLC. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but can connect you with an independent attorney. Visit LegalZoom.com and use offer code TNT to receive $10 off at checkout. And by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at gazelle.com. Tech News Today is the show where we talk about the tech news of the journalists who report it. It's YouTube's 10th birthday tomorrow. My name is Mike Elgin, and joining us as co-anchor today is Mashable Senior Tech Analyst, Christina Warren. How are you doing, Christina? I'm well. I'm well. It is cold in New York City, um, as has been the season. But uh, happy birthday, YouTube. Happy early Valentine's Day. And happy Galentine's Day to all the Parks and Rec and Lady fans out there. Yes, we love you, all of you uh, watching the show. All of you. Uh, yeah, it's cold here, too. I think it's in the high 60s, uh, which is Shut unseasonably up. cold here in California. Now, um, tell me, I don't want to hear it, Mike. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> tell me. It's 12 is, degrees outside. I don't want to hear it. Let's talk about something much more important than the blizzard and yes. the snow and all that. Hairgate. Is Hairgate really a thing or isn't it? I'm confused. Okay, so... <laughs> I'm confused too. So as, as people might remember, when the iPhone 6 came out in the, earlier this fall, um, you know, some people were reporting getting the phone stuck on their beards or in their hair and stuff getting pulled out. And we thought this was ridiculous. And Mashable even made a funny video that the Today Show even like featured for a half second showing, <laughs> you know, Hairgate, it's not a thing. We, we tested it with a bunch of people using my phone, not a, not a thing. Well, we had some visitors in from from Canada yesterday, and they had a bone to uh, they had a bone to pick with me, and they said, "Hey, saw your video saying Harrogate's not a thing. Um, I'm going to show you my phone and show my face, and oh my God, it's actually a thing." Um, so it turns out that this guy's Canadian iPhone, and, and it was weird. It was only the it was all all three Canadians all had iPhone sixes. All of them ganked hairs from his face. Um, the American iPhones we had in the office did not. It was bizarre as all get out. So uh, we had to make a follow-up video where I had to say sorry to Canada. <laughs> so, so, oh, wow. So, you know, what, why doesn't Apple like Canada? They're sending them this, these hair gate phones. I, I don't know. I mean, personally, I think it's just easier to blame Canada than to blame Apple, you know, I mean, as, as the song goes. No, you know, what I think it is, is that uh, there is probably differences in tolerances and, and at different factories and, and probably shipments that go different places. We've also seen reports of people in the United States having this problem, too, and people having, you know, reports in Canada that their phones are fine. So, I mean, it, 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 it's a joke. It's funny, you know, trying to not be, it's anecdotal, not scientific. But I do think that, uh, you know, I mean, literally seeing it in person after trying to get this to work months ago was was kind of eye-opening there's there's got to be something with maybe the way the steel is at the top of the glass and the frame where for some people if, if your facial hair length is a certain length and you're holding the phone in a certain way and maybe your your face is angled just so yeah you know it's it's like a pair of, of tweezers so uh uh you know it, it's it's funny but i think it's just easier to blame canada in this case okay it's official we're blaming canada all right, let's jump into the news here. President Obama will announce today an executive order to set up a way for tech companies to share information with the government on cybersecurity and consumer protection. The president is at Stanford University in Silicon Valley today meeting with some, but not all, tech leaders. Tolu Oloronipa is a reporter for Bloomberg News, and he joins us by phone from inside, deep inside the White House. Welcome to you, Tolu. Uh, hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Now, what is it that the president is going to order exactly? Will cooperation by tech companies be actually required by the government? What's going on there? No, this will all be voluntary. The president is getting all of these tech leaders in a room and, and planning this new executive order in, in hopes that they will uh, want to share their information. Uh, the idea is that if everyone shares their information about these cyber threats, then it will be easier to combat these cyber threats and, and make sure we're all on the same page. 
So it's not going to be a requirement, but it's going to be something that will make it easier and perhaps uh, provide some uh, protections for these companies as they share information with the government and with each other uh, on any cyber threats or, or uh, attacks on their networks they may be experiencing. Now, you mentioned that, you know, he's trying to get a bunch of these leaders in, in one room at one time, but it seems like he's been snubbed by a few tech leaders. Uh, who refused to show up and why? Yeah, some of the biggest companies in Silicon Valley did not send their CEOs. So Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg isn't going to be there. Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, their CEOs are not going to be there. Tim Cook from Apple is actually going to be there. He's going to speak there. But, you know, there's this long-running uh, tension between the, uh, the government and the Obama administration and uh, Silicon Valley over NSA, over spying, over some of the things that the government has compelled uh, some of these companies to do uh, to their clients when it comes to their data and their information. So there is this tension. Uh, the White House has said that that's part of the reason that uh, the president's going out there to try to smooth over, over some of those relations. Um, but there are a lot of no-shows. Now, you reported in your piece that some credit card companies are about to announce some new... Uh, security measures. Uh, is this something that's going to be announced at this summit, or is this separate from, from the president's visit there? Yes, some of these announcements are going to be made at, at, <clears throat> at the summit. Um, things like uh, credit card companies looking at you know, incorporating biometrics into uh, authorizations for, uh, for clients and customers who want to sign into their accounts, making it more than just a password and a, and a username. Um, so there, uh, to, to a certain extent, there's a lot of just research being done and not actual new initiatives, but they are going to announce that, you know, they're looking at using biometrics, using voice recognition, using those types of things to, uh, to increase their security for their systems. Now, is the president also going to talk about the new Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center uh, while, while he's here? That, yes, that is another thing that, that he's going to talk about. They announced this uh, earlier in the week. Um, they're going to have another uh, federal agency that's specifically focused on cyber security and sort of making sure all of the information is uh, getting disseminated to all the different agencies that, that focus on cyber security from law enforcement to the intelligence community to um, homeland security. So he's going to talk a little bit about, about that, about what the government's doing. A lot of these companies want the government to do more to protect uh, their networks, to retaliate against you know state actors and foreign nations that attack uh, U.S. companies and attack uh, our cyber networks. So he's going to try to get across to the uh, companies that the government's on the case and, and he's creating this new uh, cyber intelligence uh, center to, uh, to, to attack uh, some of these issues that uh, a lot of the companies believe have not, you know, that the government has not done enough on. Tolu Olorunipa is at Bloomberg.com and you can follow him on Twitter at T-O-L-U-S-E-O. -E Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Well, just a sec, we got some uh, product updates from Apple for you. But first, let's talk about LegalZoom. LegalZoom is a place where you can get self-help for all your legal needs for your life, for example. You can uh, set up a will or a living trust, uh, something we all should do, really. Uh, and you can do all kinds of personal legal things for much, much uh, less money than it would cost you to actually hire a lawyer. Lawyers are expensive. Uh, but if you have a business, you know, one of the things that businesses have to do is they have to deal with business compliance, even the smallest uh, corporations. And LegalZoom will help you with your annual reports, your initial reports, things like corporate minutes, your compliance calendar. They'll help you with a compliance calendar to make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, you can... Uh, get all kinds of operating agreements, and you can also get help with bylaws and resolutions. Again, these things are required by law. If you've got a small company, you got to be doing this stuff, and LegalZoom is going to make it super easy and affordable for you to do it. Don't wait any longer to organize your life. Just go to LegalZoom.com and use the offer code TNT to get $10 off at checkout. For legal help you can count on for your family or small business, just go to LegalZoom.com today. And remember to use the offer code TNT, and that'll get you $10 off your order. And we thank LegalZoom for their support of Tech News Today. Pinterest is working on the addition of a buy button that may launch this year, according to an exclusive on Recode by Jason Del Rey. Jason joins us now to talk about it. How are you doing, Jason? I'm great. How are you, Mike? I'm doing great, thanks. Now, how will this work exactly? Will it turn Pinterest into some kind of fancy.com type site? I mean, I, I think in the long run, uh, yes, but the question, I have a couple of questions about this, not all of which made it into my piece. One is, 
they just launched their advertising program uh, less than a year ago. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of results advertisers are seeing in terms of conversions. And I think that'll that'll say a lot about the potential that uh, Pinterest as an e-commerce platform will have. Um, they may have been forced into it by some younger companies um, pushing sort of similar uh, apps on the market, but ones in which you can buy directly from. Now, Pinterest has, uh, they've been removing affiliate links for, for, for a while. And is, do you think this move is related to the, the, the buy button that you reported on? Do you think that's why they're kind of getting rid of these affiliate links because they're going to be pushing their own program? I mean, so that they're saying it's not directly that. I think, listen, I think it's, they're growing up as a business and you see with every social network, when they get to a certain scale, when they're ready, they start throwing up some big walls around uh, around their platform to keep out what what they probably view as moochers. And uh, <laughs> I think I think this is part of that. And I think I think it's not super surprising. And I think they're, they're just getting try, starting to get serious about their business and and want to make sure that they're keeping it clear of um, other people benefiting off of them when they're not even benefiting themselves yet. Do we have any other details about this? I mean, how the payments processing is going to work, what sort of retailers might be involved, any any sort of details like that? Sure. So I think, you know, so so my, my gut feeling, I, I think we may see it this year or it might be early next year. My gut feeling is that they'll probably want to roll out something and test it around the holidays. This is sort of a similar timeline that Twitter worked on uh, when they when they rolled out their commerce test. Um, I first reported on that in January of, of last year, and then it rolled out around the holidays. So we could see that. Um, they're probably working with a company called Stripe. They're close to a deal. They've basically chosen them, but a deal hasn't been signed. Um, and Stripe as you may know, uh, is a payments company that also works with Facebook and Twitter and is basically winning every big uh, biz dev deal in the payment space right now. Um, question about retailers, I'm not sure yet. One can think that some of their early advertising partners, if happy, would be the first to try this, but, but I'm not clear on that. You know, a lot of uh, retailers that I've talked to over the years have been really wanting to have this ability to, to sell directly on Pinterest because they do see so much, um, you know, uh, users, so many users coming in through Pinterest. It's such a big referral. Do you think that they will be excited about this platform since they're going to basically have to set up what it sounds like a separate storefront rather than than having just kind of a, a direct portal through their own systems? Do you think that they will still be wanting to to, to take part in this? Yeah. You know, it it really, really depends on the retailer. And, and, and I'll go back to Twitter for a second. There are some of them that are excited about it and think we should be where our customers are, wherever they are. And then there's a, there are a lot with, that have sort of an old school mentality and maybe for the right reasons that we want to control the experience, the buying experience. Um, we don't want to have to fit ourselves into someone else's platform that may not have the design we like. So I, I think it's really going to be retailer by retailer. And you may see some of the ad partners not want to do this if they're the type that, that like keeping people in their own ecosystem. Jason Del Rey is at Recode.net, and you can follow him on Twitter at Del Rey. Thanks for joining us, Jason. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Christina. Chinese phone giant Xiaomi announced yesterday plans to bring its Me.com e-commerce site to the United States. The site will sell accessories to American buyers, but not Xiaomi phones. Rolf Winkler is a reporter for The Wall Street Journal and joins us now. Hey, Rolf. How you doing? Hey, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Now, Xiaomi is a fast-moving company. Why didn't they just uh, introduce phones to the U.S. market yesterday? Because uh, as fast as a company wants to move, it's a lot harder to uh, get carriers to move as quickly, I think. You have to get phones tested, certified. Uh, it, it can be a long process to bring new phones to, uh, especially to the U.S. market, but, but to many, many markets. I mean, and there's also the question too that they might be face they might face some serious legal challenges with some of their phones, with some of the patents that 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 some of the other companies have too. Would you say that's accurate? I think that's a question that they're certainly being asked. Those folks will say, no, really, this is all about certification. But uh, you know, I, I think some people wonder with you know, there's always been patent issues in the Android ecosystem. I think some of those are dying down. Uh, you, you look and you see most of the lawsuits have kind of disappeared lately. Uh, they're not coming to much. Companies have decided they're going to strike agreements. They're going to cross-license things, technology. 
So I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's a consideration. Uh, I don't know if it's the primary one. Now, uh, if they're not selling phones, why did uh, former Google Android executive Hugo Barra uh, talk about the phones and the software and some of the, the things you can only uh, experience if you've got a Xiaomi phone? Are they trying <laughs> to uh, get Americans to figure out other ways to buy Xiaomi phones? What, or are they just prepping the market? Why, why were they talking about phones? I think what this event really was was an opportunity for tech press to get to know Xiaomi. So a lot of us, you, you look. Let, let's step back and, and put this company in context. Now it's an incredibly fast growing uh, smartphone maker, but almost primarily in China, uh, almost exclusively in China. And what makes the, the, they're very interesting for a number of reasons. One is the business model that they they carved out and have been uh, one of the pioneers cr creating, which is we're going to sell quality devices effectively at cost. Uh, which is something that is making Samsung's life in particular much more difficult. Samsung making had made 30% gross margins or something on that order uh, selling Android phones. And now other companies are saying, well, why are you paying that premium to Samsung customers <laughs> when we're going to sell you the same black or white rectangle uh, with the same high quality components and we'll give it to you essentially for the cost of manufacturing it. Uh, so there have been a lot of questions from certainly American uh, press about who this company really is, uh, what, what, what's interesting about them, uh, why they're important, et cetera. So I think really this was an opportunity to introduce Xiaomi to uh, a, a, just, just to the press, really. And you, you quoted uh, CEO Lynn Ben as saying that they're not a handset company, they're an internet company. Uh, what does he mean by that? I mean, isn't that just, I mean, is, is, is that kind of spin or is that kind of their way of trying to talk about how they are aiming to be more of a lifestyle brand, I guess, or, or, or more than just a phone company. What, what did he mean by that? That's a great question, and it's not exactly clear. They'll say we're not a handset company, we're an internet company. Uh, Co-founder Ben Lin, as, as you mentioned, said, he said that right at the top of the, of the presentation. They spoke throughout about we're doing things, quote, the internet way when it comes to selling phones, creating community around their phones, et cetera. They're trying to distinguish themselves from other handset makers. But again, it, it, it's really hard to understand, uh, the, to, to, to give a lot of credence to that message in the sense that, yeah, really they make handsets. That is what they do. And, and the reason they're <laughs> trying to emphasize we're not a handset company is because all these handset companies are effectively the same now. This is the key challenge in the Android ecosystem, which is, like I said, we're all selling the exact same, pretty much the exact same uh, black rectangle now, and what Xiaomi will do is they'll say, well, we have this gigantic uh, ecosystem, really fan base, they call it, around their phones. They're not wrong. They've got uh, a huge number of particularly young Chinese who just love the brand, love everything about the brand. They're brilliant marketers. Um, it, it, they don't actually spend very much on marketing. I don't think they spend really anything on marketing. Uh, it's it just, it just word of mouth sales, flash sales, they constrain supply deliberately so that when they offer a new phone, it sells out in seconds or minutes, uh, which is just just really a, a brilliant strategy. But again, yeah, you're right to key in on that sentence because that's, you know, words that a lot of us would wonder, do they actually mean anything? That's, that's you know, we're, we're left to, we'll have to see. It seems to me that they can't decide whether they want to be Apple or they want to be Google. Uh, either way, they want to be uh, they huge. want to be both. I mean, yeah, they want to be both. Yeah. And maybe yeah. Amazon too. Rolf Winkler is at WSJ.com and you can follow him on Twitter at Rolf Winkler. Thanks for joining us today, Rolf. Thanks, guys. All right. Google and Mattel today unveiled a new Viewmaster toy based on Google Cardboard. Ben Fox Rubin writes for CNET and joins us right now. How are you doing, Ben? Good. How are you, Mike? How are you, Christina? We are good. <laughs> we are very good, especially Christina. Before we yes. get into the news, uh, can you first remind us what Google Cardboard is? Google Cardboard is a super duper cheap virtual reality headset that Google introduced last year. And from what I understand, first they were just starting to tinker with the idea of virtual reality. And since then, they've been able to add a lot more apps to it, a lot more partnerships, and they're trying to make it um, a bigger platform these days to go up against some of the other guys doing virtual reality. So, you know, and it's, it's funny that they're, they're partnering with Mattel on this. They're doing this, this Viewmaster product because when it first came out, a lot of us even commented on the fact that, oh, this kind of looks like a Viewmaster. So what is this, this partnership that they've announced with Mattel? Is it basically just virtual reality for kids? Is that kind of what this is? 
it, but it, it's it's actually hard to tell exactly what direction it's going to end up going in. Um, during the presentation this morning at, at uh, in New York, they did talk a lot about how kids could end up using this kind of visit. As you can see, uh, San Francisco. Uh, I went to see a land of the dinosaurs and I went on the <laughs> moon kind of using this. Um, but arguably, it could also be for adults. Um, one of the Mattel executives that talked today said that Viewmaster in its 75-year history had been used by pilots uh, or uh, surgeons for different uses. I, I, I didn't actually know that. So there is a possibility where there could be an additional educational function for people that um, aren't kids. Uh, but I think they're still very, very early on that. So it, it's hard really to say uh, how big this is going to get. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the need for uh, for them to make this Mattel plastic rounded safe toy thing for <laughs> kids. Uh, but uh, us big kids probably want to check this out too. Are they going to come out with just a standalone app for other platforms or at least for Google Cardboard generally? The way that it works is uh, you could use it for just about every single phone. And Mattel went out of its way to say that you could even use this for an iPhone 6 Plus, uh, potentially uh, for a Windows phone. So Mattel wants to make this as broad as possible. So um, I guess an adult could end up using it. The thing is that when when I was testing out the demos, they were really they were they were th uh, 360 environments where you could uh, see. Like the San Francisco Bridge or something like that, but they were they were somewhat static. So when I was at Alcatraz, I, I got to go into a cell at Alcatraz. But you look up, you look at the ceiling, you look at the toilet, you look at the sink. Um, it's <laughs> it's not like it's this. It's so I, I guess it's an immersive experience, but it's not like a video game, not yet anyway. So it's similar to the concept of the viewfinder um, or the viewmaster rather from days past, but. It's not like it's a um, it's not a video game. Uh, there are some things that cardboard has these days that are a little more like these short movies that are a little more um, interactive. But but you're still it's it's you're sitting back and you're watching it um, as opposed to uh, interacting a little bit more with with what you're seeing on the screens. Yeah. So what maybe you can help me with this. You know, they they announced this today. They had some demos, but they didn't have any prototypes. It's not going to be out until October. Did you get any sense of why they bothered announcing this so early when they really didn't have a lot to, to kind of show off more than just kind of the, the basic idea? I think that Mattel especially, my best guess for that is that Mattel has had a bit of a rough run lately. Their CEO resigned last month. Uh, their sales have been pretty bad. And you could blame that on the fact that kids are just using uh, digital devices much more often. They're on their smartphone, they're on their tablet. However, Hasbro and Lego, their two biggest competitors, are actually doing just fine. Uh, Hasbro has been gaining thanks to uh, its partnership with Transformers. And uh, Lego, people just still love Lego. And Lego has been um, expanding into a lot of new areas. So I think Mattel is trying to say, hey, We've got this uh, new sexy partnership with Google. We're going to do virtual reality in the early days of virtual reality when it's getting a lot of attention. Um, that, that would probably be my best guess as to why they would do that now and to potentially prime the market to say, we're, we're going to have this thing ready for um, the holiday season. And it's only 30 bucks. So that's, that's pretty cheap for uh, this little virtual reality set. So. You could arguably buy that for your nephew or, um, you know, whoever's on your Christmas or Hanukkah list, whatever, uh, for not that much money. Um, you know, I think the Galaxy Gear VR is a couple hundred bucks, like 300 bucks last time I checked. So um, this is, I guess it's a good way to tell people, all right, here, it's, it's going to be coming sometime later. Well, I, for one, was disappointed. I was hoping for a glass hole Barbie to come out of this partnership. <laughs> uh, ben Fox Rubin is at CNET.com. You can follow him on Twitter at Ben Fox Rubin. Thank you so much for joining us, Ben. Thanks. All right. Well, we've got three product updates from Apple for you. First of all, Apple enabled two-step authentication for iMessage and FaceTime on all Apple platforms. Pretty cool, eh, Christina? It's about time is what I have to say. I'm, I'm very glad that they did this, but it is about time. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And uh, now that they have that, uh, you know, iMessage is actually a super, super secure way to communicate. Uh, and uh, and this makes it all the more secure. So that is, uh, that is fantastic news. 
Uh, Apple yesterday also made its iWork apps, and you won't care about this, Christina, including mm -hmm. Pages, Numbers, and Keynote, accessible to users without an Apple device through iCloud Beta. Now, the free cloud apps used to be available only via Apple hardware. You had to have an iPhone or an iPad or a MacBook or something like that. And now, everybody else can use it. I don't think anybody will, but everybody can <laughs> I don't either. Uh, use iWork. No, I mean, hey, it's a good thing if, if you're running, you know, Windows or, or, or Linux or on a Chromebook or something, it's a bunch of shares a document with you and you want to access it. I mean, that becomes important. And I think that if uh, they're very, very late to the collaborative work game. You know, I don't think anybody's going to be replacing Google Docs with with iWork apps. Um, but, uh, but I think it's great. And um, certainly means that if you're sharing a link with someone to something to document um, and, and they don't have, you know, dot pages compatible stuff, they'll still be able to read it. So that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Google, Apple also increased the maximum iOS app size from 2 gigabytes to 4 gigabytes. That's a doubling of size. The cap on cell-based downloads is still 100 megabytes. Uh, larger apps still require a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, why do you think they do this, Christina? I mean, 4 gigs is a big uh, size for an app. And that's a huge size for an app, um, I, but especially when you consider how many people are still buying 16 gig phones, right? Um, I, I don't even want to think about that, but I'm, I'm guessing it's because the games are becoming more and more immersive and some apps are doing some really interesting things and they probably don't want to be holding back developers. They've probably been hearing from developers who are saying, you know what, we're not able to get everything in that we need to get in. Uh, but four gigabytes, I mean, that's that's a tremendous amount of size. That's almost a, that's basically a DVD worth of, of, of content. Um, so I'm glad they're still limiting the cell downloads to 100 megs because otherwise, uh, you know, you'd go through your monthly uh, quota with uh, with one download. Um, but cool. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to seeing if we have any super apps that are actually, you know, worthy of taking advantage of that much space. But um, I guess we'll, I guess time will tell. I'm glad I have 128 uh, gigabyte iPhone 6. That's all I can say. Yeah, you're going to need it. Uh, in mergers and acquisitions, London-based King Digital Entertainment, which makes the game Candy Crush, will acquire the Seattle game company Z2, soon to be called Z2, no doubt, for up to $150 million in cash. You know, uh, I didn't realize this, uh, Christina Warren, but they have been working hard to rely less on Candy Crush, and, and now less than half of their revenue comes from Candy Crush. So that's pretty... That's, that is really interesting. Good, good for them. I, I'm still totally addicted to the, the, the Candy Crush Soda Crush, the, the, the <laughs> sequel of sorts. Um, and that is actually a good puzzle game, but yeah, no, good for them to di to diversify. I, I think they've, um, as, as their earnings have, have shown, they've diversified much more quickly than, than Zynga um, did when when uh, after Farmville and, and those games collapsed. Um, so good on them. Yep, good good thinking on their part. In government crackdown news, the Chinese government says it's going to start offering fraud. Uh, uh, going after fraud on dating websites. A spokesman for the Cyberspace Administration of China says that the government will crack down on the fraud rings and prostitution that plague the nature, nation's matchmaking sites, which are super popular there. One dating site called Jawan claims more than 100 million users. Can you imagine a dating site with 100 million users, Christina? <laughs> I, I can't. And what's amazing about that is if you think about the, the, the population in, in China that's yeah. still just dropping the ball again, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's still like, okay, great, awesome, like... And, no, and but that's insane that, that that many people are on one app. Presumably, a dating site will actually help increase the population indirectly. Uh, we got yeah, some. Uh, we we got a TNT fan of the day that uh, you're just not going to believe. But first, uh, let me tell you about Gazelle. Gazelle is going to buy your used gadgets, and the reason you're going to want to sell it to them is first of all. It's super, super easy. Second of all, they give you really good money for these gadgets. Just go to gazelle.com and enter in the gadget that you have. Uh, it can be a phone. It can be a tablet. It can be an Apple you know, laptop. You can even sell your old iPod, believe it or not. They will buy that. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply it to your shiny new uh, object of your affection. And uh, it's just a fantastic idea to use Gazelle uh, to sell a, a, your used gadgets. Don't leave it lying around. It's losing value. The battery is, is getting weaker, and they're going to give you less and less for it. Everybody will give you less for it, no matter what, uh, if it just sits around. So uh, make sure you go to Gazelle and find out what your iPhone is worth. Take a minute, go to gazelle.com, and they will tell you what it's worth, and they will pay you fast for your device. Our TNT fan of the day is Bo Beckwith in New York, who posted these two pictures on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. He says that he's catching up on back episodes of Tech News Today at lunchtime while he's building a log cabin mm. in the Thousand Islands. Awesome. Yeah, the Thousand Islands are between the U.S.-Canadian border. Uh, and uh, look at that log cabin. That is a beauty. Oh, my God. Yeah. It is so pretty. Yeah. If you Can you well click done, on the Bo. top picture there? And that is Christina Warren uh, I know. I was next to some canned uh, foods. 
So, wow, look at that. And, and a CAD drawing of his cabin. That's fantastic. That's yeah. great, Bo. And on his laptop, if you notice, there's like a, there's, I guess, the plans for his log right. cabin. I, I don't think our, our pioneer uh, forebearers had laptops with the, with the CAD drawings. <laughs> well, they did it the old-fashioned way with an axe. How do you watch or listen to TNT? Just record a video or take a picture of yourself or your setup and post it on Google+, Plus, Twitter, or Facebook. Use the hashtag HowIWatchTNT, and we will find it. And that is the tech news today. Christina Warren, what's next for you? Are you still going to write a, a, another expose on Hairgate, or are you done with that? I think I'm done with Hairgate. Yeah. I think I'm done with Hairgate. No, I'm, I'm going into the long weekend, frankly. I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm working on a piece right now, uh, basically trying to kind of suss out the, the hype around the the, the Apple car rumors and, and kind of, it, it's more tongue in cheek, but kind of try to think about, okay, well, what what would this look like? How how could this possibly make sense? In what universe could Apple possibly be building a car? Uh, so that's kind of what I'm working on right now. And then I'm just uh, happy to go into the, the long President's Day weekend. You know why people, I have a theory about why people predict, as I have done, that, or actually, I don't think I predict, I think I said they should, but the reason is that everybody really, really wants them to. We <laughs> all to love say, to drive an Apple car. We How all great want an Apple car. It would be amazing. We all want an Apple car is really what we want. Um, except the first, the first generation model is going to be kind of buggy. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to be as good looking, That's not going right. to be as sleek, not going to be as fast. And then we're going to want the new one immediately. And right. the, you know, the trade in value is going to be... But yeah, but other than that, we all want the Apple car. And they're going to want you to buy one every two years. And, and you that, will. That's the whole thing. And, and you will. You're going to be like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then they'll say, oh, but it has better gas mileage and Siri will now talk to you uh, or, or something like that. And, and we go, okay, fine. And, and maybe even Siri will drive it someday. Well, <laughs> Now that would be amazing. It's Siri, but, but instead Siri could just become Jeeves yeah. or something. Right. You know, and it, you know, I, I don't know. I, I want driving Miss Christina um, as, 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 as I want my Apple car to drive me around, that, that's for sure. Y yes, but uh, I, I want the navigation to be Google Maps, not Apple Maps. I, <laughs> yes, I okay, like you know, much. this is so true. No, yeah. this is so true. Exactly. It, it, if Apple Maps is the built-in nav, then, then there might be a deal breaker, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christina. Well, thank you so much for co-anchoring today. We will see you next Friday. See you next Friday. All right. Well, you can subscribe to Tech News Today at twit.tv slash TNT, and you really should subscribe if you're not subscribed already. You can also watch us live every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 1800 UTC at live.twit.tv or on the app or browser plugin of your choice. You can subscribe to our subreddit at technewstoday.reddit.com, and you can also follow me personally on Ello. No, I'm serious. You can follow me on Ello, ello.co slash Mike Elgin. And please send us your thoughts and opinions. Send email to tnt at twit.tv or call 260-TNT-SHOW. And don't miss our evening newscast, Tech News Tonight at 4 p.m. Pacific tonight and every weeknight right here in the Twit Network. My name is Mike Elgin. Thank you for tuning in. We're off on President's Day on Monday, uh, so we'll see you Tuesday.